Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Today we're learning about mythology in ancient Greece. Now, it's important to understand that our idea of mythology today is much different than the idea of mythology back in uh, ancient times. Today, when we think about mythology, we think about you know tall tales. We think about lies. We think about you know the Loch Ness monster and Bigfoot and uh, El Chupacabra and all those kinds of different mythological beings today that we know to be fake or we know to be false. Um, we know them to be, you know, stories and old wives' tales, you know, those kinds of things. Um, but in ancient Greek times, in ancient times, mythology had a whole different meaning. Mythology was used originally to help explain the world around us, explain things we didn't quite understand, like fate or or, or, or science, that we just didn't have that idea of how to comprehend. Um, so all those kinds of things that we just weren't aware of, we use mythology to explain. It's important, again, to understand that mythology uh, is not a lie. It's not a tall tale. It's just a way of um, basically you know, coming up with our own understanding of the world around us uh, using stories. So the question always comes to be, uh, do the ancient Greeks actually believe in their mythology? If I asked you guys today, you know, do you believe in the Loch Ness Monster? Do you believe in uh, Bigfoot? You'd probably say no. I mean, there's a few people out there that might say yes, but most of us would say no. Uh, so the question is, do ancient Greeks actually believe in their mythology? And to a degree, yes. Some of them believe in their mythology in a religious context, kind of like, Today, people would believe in Judaism or Christianity or Islam. Uh, they believed in it in, a myth in this kind of religious context. We talked about patron gods and how they believed that some gods uh, looked over their cities, like Apollo looks over um, Sparta and uh, you know uh, uh, Poseidon looks over Corinth and uh, Athena looks over Athens. Um, so they did kind of believe in the Greek gods. Uh, in, in this religious context, um, but some people, again, don't believe in it. They believe in it more as, uh, a, you know, stories, um, entertainment. Uh, there was, like, some sort of value uh, to just passing down these legends through an oral tradition. Um, so, yes and no. Ancient Greeks are going to believe in mythology to a degree. Some of them are going to have this religious idea around it, um, you know, Specifically, if it's their patron god, uh, they might believe more in those kinds of uh, mythologies rather than maybe like centaurs and stuff like that. Um, but a lot of people uh, in ancient Greece are going to use this as like an entertainment value. Uh, ancient Greece uh, ex mythology is going to explain all sorts of different things. They're going to use their mythology to... Um, explain the creation of the world, uh, where the titans are going to create the world. They're going to use it to explain war, you know, why some countries win and other countries lose. Uh, while so, some city-states succeed in war more often, and while some of them, you know, fail. Uh, they're going to use it to explain famine, you know, why aren't we growing crops the way that we used to, you know, that must be some sort of mythological reasoning. Maybe the gods aren't happy with us. Or maybe, you know, we didn't do, um, you know, the right, you know, sacrifice to, uh, you know, a certain god. Um, it's, they're going to use it to explain death. And we'll talk about that in just a second, too. Um, and they'll also use it to explain, you know, your good and your bad luck. All things uh, that are hard to understand, that are hard to wrap your head around, even today. You know, and we talk about, you know, why some wars start or, you know, why people have good and bad luck and, and people can't quite pinpoint the exact reasoning. Um, so they use what they know to explain it. Today we have a much more logical uh, reasoning behind, you know, what we believe in. Uh, but back in ancient Greece, they don't have the same reference points we do. They don't have the same knowledge and understanding that we do. Uh, so they're using this mythology to explain some of these different types of um, you know, ideas. A great example here is Medusa. Uh, Medusa is a woman who was um, incredibly beautiful and she was cursed 
with a uh, hair of snakes. And when men would look into her eyes, they would turn to stone. Um, mytho Medusa is actually an example of mythology that's used to explain death. Uh, when the ancient Greeks would bury uh, their dead, they would oftentimes float them down the river. And when they floated them down the river, uh, specifically people with longer hair, typically women, uh, when you dunk your head in the water, you get those locks of hair that are going to kind of clump up, and it kind of looks like long strands that kind of resemble snakes. Um, so this is kind of what it's explaining. It's explaining, you know, the process of finding, you know, some, you know, poor person that's been floated down the river after they've passed away. Um, you know, it, it shows, you know, how the hair clumps up. Um, Medusa was explained with having these like steel cold eyes, uh, kind of like, you know, how people, when they pass away, they have, you know, they undergo these kinds of, um, physical transitions, especially in their eyes. Um, and an interesting thing about this is that this mythology around Medusa isn't just found in uh, ancient Greek culture. It's also found in other ancient cultures around the world, including uh, in the Aztec cultures uh, in South America and in um, Eastern uh, Asian cultures as well. So it's not just localized to ancient Greece. And there was no way of explaining, you know, there was no way of them... Um, getting these kinds of stories out, these kinds of mythology out to these other areas of the world, they're all coming up with this mythology on their own because they practice the same things. They bury people uh, sometimes by floating them down in the river. That's what they do when they pass away. Um, so they use these kinds of stories to explain, you know, the mythology uh, or the reasoning for, you know, death or like what you've actually found if you're, uh, you know, maybe a kid or something playing around the river. Um, but that's all we've got time for today. Uh, hopefully you guys learned a little bit about uh, mythology and how the ancients uh, use mythology to explain uh, everything around them that they quite didn't know. Uh, have a good rest of your day, and I'll see you guys in class soon. Goodbye.